Hey, Robert Young from Force Performance here again. I'm talking to you about compressor covers today. And what I've got here is four different examples of the TO4S Garrett compressor cover. The first example is one of the earliest covers I've ever seen released for the T4S. Smooth bell mouth inlet. For years and years and years, this is the way to do it. This is never a bad idea. It was always a great idea. Everybody loved it. It's a standard way to do it. Garrett came out and uh, Force Performance also came out. Uh, it's kind of hard to say exactly who brought this to the TO4S first. I like to think that we did uh, with the surge port cover for the TO4S when we debuted the 82 HTA about seven years ago. A lot of people don't realize it's been that long, but time flies when you're making power. You also see Garrett making a cast inlet version uh, with, the, with the recirculation ports cast in. All this open area around the surge port helps flow go through the surge port and into the splitter blade of the compressor wheel. It feeds the splitter blade of the compressor wheel. You have a huge column of air that's sucking in to, towards the compressor wheel when it's under full power. This air has inertia, and that air at high speed hits this area in this ring and, is, and, and assists the air in flowing through the splitter groove and into the, uh, the surge groove and into the splitter area of the wheel, about at the midpoint of the wheel in the contour. Very useful for extending the compressor map towards the right for the high flow choke flow. Also surge port, very useful in, in helping you on the left hand side uh, when you're near the uh, surge point of the compressor because it lets the compressor act like it's a smaller compressor. Both of these very effective uh, examples of surge port. The last one I have here on my right is, uh, is well it's really pretty. You can see it's got nice, really pretty machine work here on the inside of it. Um, but this pretty machine work right here doesn't make up for this. You have the same column of air coming in. You have the bell mouth from the, you know, old as dinosaurs type cover, but you have these holes drilled here. Now, it is a lot simpler to drill these holes than it is to mill out all that material. Expensive machine work, cheap machine work. But the big problem you have with these holes is while they look like they're doing something, they don't really do anything. This is not, this doesn't present, these holes do not present enough area to the column of air that's coming in to actually get any flow to go through the surge port. You run, you can take the turbo and run it with this cover and this cover, and you'll make more power with an open cover than you will this bullet hole cover, so we call a cover like this. You see these everywhere. Everybody likes the bullet hole cover. It's, everybody likes it because everybody likes to make it because it's low cost to make. When things are low cost to make, people get to sell them at a low cost. When you get to sell it at a low cost, then distributors like it because they get to make more money on it. This is popular for that reason. It's not popular because it's effective. This is what is effective, and this is what you want to see in a surge port on a cover. That's what I know about surge ports, and now you know it too. Rock on.